You're listening to Satellite Sisters. What's a satellite sister? The person you call when the best thing in your life happens or the worst. The person that gets you up, gets you going, and gets you through. And every once in a while, changes your mind. This podcast is part pep talk, part weekly check-in. Like grabbing coffee with a friend. Thanks for being here. Welcome to the Satellite Sisterhood. You're listening to Satellite Sisters. Great to be with you today. I'm Leon Dolan in Pasadena, California. I'm a novelist and a podcaster and a producer. And our question for the day is who has seen Top Gun Maverick? I mean, it's the law. We got to ask this. Jewel? Of course I've seen it, Leon. Uh, this is Julie Dolan. I'm the oldest sister in Dallas, Texas. Leon, this is the first time I've been back in a movie theater in quite some time. Uh, and it's really good, Leanne. Everybody's right. It's good. Okay. Goes you have, have you seen it? No, I have not seen it yet just for a variety of reasons. Yeah. I, I was sort of on the fence, but it's just the good reviews keep coming. Liz, what about you? Are you, are you and I the only Americans that haven't seen this movie yet? <laughs> well, here's the deal. I went into this weekend saying that I was either going to see Top Gun or I was going to see the Downton Abbey movie because everyone all the satellites. Oh, right. Right. You should I still see haven't... that as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't see either of those two, Julie. I don't know. I just lost my mojo. So I still have both Top Gun Maverick and the Downton Abbey movie to look forward to. That's the way I think of it. Okay. okay. There you go. Liz, you've got a whole summer stretched out. I do. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Wait till the crowds thin. Wait till they thin. Um, but Julie, you're going to have a, a full review in Entertaining Sisters. of Top Well, Gun. there's really, I mean, everyone's seen it except for you two. So I don't really <laughs> review it, but I have some comments. Okay. Okay. We have other Entertaining Sisters things to recommend as well. We have a variety. We have books, we have TV, and we have music today uh, on Entertaining Sisters. Also, um, some announcements about next week. There's going to be a meetup in Santa Fe and Liz and Julie are doing a special theme show. So you're going to want to listen to the end of this show, please. Uh, also, Julie, you have some Tuesday trends. I do. I do. I have some new ones. Some are controversial. Some are, are very good news. Uh, and one is just wacky. So. All right. And we've been off for a couple of weeks and there's no doubting that the last couple of weeks has been a very sad few weeks in America. So Liz, you're going to take us through some coping strategies. Right? Yeah. You know, I was reading this article about psychic numbing sisters, you know, mm. and it's, it's hard when there's so much bad news to know, do I want to engage with this? Do I right. not want to engage with this? So we're going to talk about that a little bit. All right, good. Okay, so that's on today's show. But Jewel, what, what happened this week? Well, Leanne, I was very excited because we went out to dinner, which is still a big deal these days, you know, after a, a long time lockdown. And we went with, to, with some friends uh, to a new to us restaurant. This is a restaurant that's getting very good reviews. It's supposed to be very buzzy. And we were excited to be there. We had a great table and we had ordered uh, our dinner and we were eating our appetizers when a woman came, approached the table and said, is your last name Lawrence? And we said, no. And she said, well, the hostess told me you're the ones that stole my table reservation. <gasps> what? Yeah, really? this, I mean, this is this, is that is a this thing? A, I don't Well, that's what I'm asking you. Is this a thing to steal a table reservation? Remember that movie Date Night with Steve Carell and Tina Fey where oh, yeah. they, where they pretended to be like the triple horns and, uh, and then this. <laughs> right. And then they get too. swept up. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. I had forgotten about that. It's yes. a very funny premise. So you were triple horning? I, no, Liz. No, we were not triple horning. OK, no. So th then this woman said, well, she told me you stole my reservation. I was here. You know, I made a reservation. I'm here with my friend. It's her special birthday. And um, and I said, well, did you get a table? And she said, yes, we're seated. But I don't know. She came she came over to our table. In fact, it was the second time she came to our table. I had noticed her, uh, you know, because and I thought she was like a manager, because, you know, how sometimes managers and restaurants sort of come over and they check out. They don't say anything to you, but they seem to be you know, just seeing what's going on at the table. Yeah. So this is the second time she came to the table. And I don't know what she expected. Were, were we supposed to get our apps up from the table and like go to the street or go to the curb? I don't I don't know. She, and then she she continued on. She said, 
I, I, I wasn't sure because you just don't look like people that would steal a reservation, you know? <laughs> what What is her problem? What? Why would the did I don't what even did understand this? Did the did, did the the hostess the hostess, the hostess apparently you? the hostess apparently told this woman maybe or maybe not, but the this woman got it in her head that we had we had taken her the exact table that she wanted uh, oh. for oh. her special birthday celebration. Okay, I don't know whether the host the hostess never spoke to us. I mean, the hostess sat us at the table. Okay. That was that happened. Okay. Did you and have that, a reservation? Yes, we had a reservation. Okay, I'm just asking some we are not, questions. I'm not accusing <laughs> you. I'm just trying to get some facts on the table. Like, okay. Oh, so I, I, the- yeah, I just want to make an announcement. There is probably some triple horning going on out there, but Julie Dolan is not the kind of person that's going to triple horn. <laughs> that's no what way. this that's no what way. this crazy woman was just convinced that we just were not, she just didn't believe it. Uh and so in the meantime, she has left her birthday friend at the table. She's now, she's like engaged in a conversation with us. We don't really, you know, we don't know what to say. We're not going, you know, we were like, we were seated here. That's all we said. Uh, and then she came back for a third time. And, <gasps> no way. And, she, and she just, she said she went up and she told the hostess that we did not look like um, people that would steal a reservation. And she wanted the hostess to know that. And she wanted us to know that she had shared that information with the hostess that we did not look like um, uh, uh, table reservation stealers. And this is a lot of drama for her. Like what's going on with her? I, don't you think? Yeah. I, don't, yes. I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I, it was... I, and so I can't really say what I don't know what the hostess said to this woman or whether she just made this up or she just thought her our table was superior to hers. I don't know why. It's a beautiful restaurant. There were lots of nice places. And I feel very sorry for her birthday guest because she was obviously up and moving around and very agitated about this and wouldn't let it go, you know. I just think people are super stressed. I just think people are reacting in an unnatural way to a lot of things. Don't you think? Because even if it's nice of you. (laughs) I mean, I I had someone at a book event two weeks ago accuse me of stealing someone else's story and name and putting it in the book. And they were super duper confrontational about it during what was supposed to be like a lighthearted Q&A session. Oh, she just came at me and none of it was true. I don't that's, I don't really operate that way, but apparently I'd gotten sort of close to someone's actual name and sort of close to someone's life story and like a two line thing in the book. And I was like, I think she came here just to confront yeah. me. Like she yeah. paid for this lunch and I don't know. I don't know yeah. what that is, yeah. but that seems very, very strange to yeah. me. That's I mean, we didn't want to, you know, we wanted to enjoy our nice dinner right? Uh, well. and we did not want to confront it. Uh, we did not discuss this with the hostess, like, because I, that was you big know, of you. Cause I yeah. would have confronted the hostess. <laughs> no, well, I it mean, it seems like an odd thing for the hostess to yes, do. It was, it wasn't, the bus. wasn't yeah. right. <laughs> probably not, but maybe the hostess didn't really say that. I, we don't know, Leah, yeah. you know, we don't know <laughs> when we you know, this again, cause it's a special treat to go out and right. we wanted to enjoy our evening, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> If you know, if this is happening at restaurants in your area, I'd like to know about that. The triple horn scenario. And this was like a triple, triple because she came by three times. I know. I know. Okay. People have, people have a lot on their minds. People do have a lot on their minds. I think they do. Okay. I'd like to dare you now, Julie, to go steal a resume. <laughs> that, now I, I think you should. How would you do that? I don't even know. I well, guess no, you obviously, those. you can totally get away with it because, quote, you don't look like the kind of person who would steal a reservation, <laughs> whatever that means. But, you know, you have to, like, turn in your medical records at the at a hostess station now. It's not easy to get into a restaurant. It's true. That's true. Okay. All right. Well, speaking of dinner. OK, Martha Stewart, she's teaching us, still teaching us, you know, at 80, she has and stop, stop teaching us. So I, somehow I get all of her newsletters and um, I guess I could unget them, but I like them. So this was a headline 
um, that I had to click on. It was what time should you eat dinner to help you live longer? Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, this is by writer Nasha Baker, published on Martha Stewart. All right. They're doing a lot of articles on the blue zones. Are you guys familiar with those are in terms of health and nutrition? Those are those places all over the world where for whatever reason, well, usually nutrition, lifestyle, you know, free vegetables, you know, exercise, community, community. Yeah, yeah, that people live to be uh, really old. Okay. So that they have their some, I mean, they live to be a hundred, okay. right? Okay. Uh, okay. Routinely live to be a hundred. That's what the blue zones are. They were identified like 20 years ago. So apparently there was a new study published in the journal Frontiers of Nutrition, where they took a look at Lachilia. Uh, which is a province in Abruzzo, Italy, with a high population of nonagenarians, people between 90 and 99, and people above 100 years old. And in surveying these 68 nonagenarians and centarians in the region, the researchers discovered that on average, most of them ate dinner at, do you guys want to guess what time? Liz, what, what's your guess? Every night um, they ate dinner around. This is in Italy? Yeah. Italy. I'm going to say 7 p.m. I'm going to go with 5 p.m. because I know Martha Stewart gets up at three in the morning. So <laughs> I, I'm thinking she's probably hungry by 5 p.m. Okay. okay. They eat at 7.13 p.m. every oh. night. 7.13. 7.13. I love the specificity of that. <laughs> like that. That's so Martha. So Martha. So, but so blue zone. So you're right, Liz, seems a little bit late for our American dining, but in Italy, that's probably early. They eat around 7, 13. Researchers also found that this group after they ate, guess what they don't do? Eat much. They don't eat dinner and then they don't snack. They don't have a big breakfast. It's not a calorie. It's not that calorie restricting. It's, it's not that intermittent fasting. It's not that formalized, uh, but they eat dinner at 7, 13 PM. And then they really don't eat that much until lunch the next day. Hmm. Oh, okay. I so- think it's really late for a 90 year old to eat at 7, 13. I mean, I think you're like tucking them into bed at like 7, 30. I mean, well, maybe that's, I, the I don't believe this at all. Leah. <laughs> Julie, these, this is a well-studied group of, of people. Okay. These blue zones, this is legitimate. And again, as Liz said, it's in a, it's in a country where probably other people are eating at nine. So yeah, the much point later. Is that they're eating slightly oh. earlier than the average. And then they're not eating, they're not snacking after dinner. They're maybe having coffee and a light breakfast. And then they really don't eat something substantial again until lunch the next day. Okay. Plus the All Italians right. after dinner, don't they go for that? Yeah, walk around. Yeah. 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 or something yeah. like that. So yeah. they go, they I don't do it. No, we have to dinner. tuck this group in bed, like eat a little, put them in a bed. <laughs> okay. Now, and, Julie, they're walking. They're, they're walking. walking. Okay. And here's what they do in general. The survey respondents, again, these are 90 and hundred year olds, uh, consumed high amounts of cereals, vegetables, fruit, and legumes, low amounts of meat, processed meat, and eggs, and minor amounts of sweets. They kept up physically by doing their own upkeep on their land. Uh, okay, oh. so you want oh. you guys want to add some upkeep on your land into your schedule. <laughs> okay, and then I'm just going to leave you with this quote because uh, I didn't understand it. But this is what one of the scientists who did the study said: Our results support the importance of a daily caloric restriction lapse, hampering nocturnal postprandial stress, and optimizing metabolic response associated with the high consumption of plant-based foods and physical activity for the longevity of centenarian, centenarians from Abruzzo. So that's it. Like just okay. don't eat after dinner, have a light breakfast. And then, you know, you want to hamper your weed nocturnal and, postprandial and, and You could do a lot of weeding. Weed that a lot. <laughs> weed a lot. Okay. Keep shearing. You got to do some of that too, I guess, as part of. There you go. 7, 13 PM. So now, now, whenever you come over for dinner, it's at 7 30. <laughs> okay. I'm setting an alarm on my iPhone right now, Leanne, for every night at 7 13. Just a reminder. I should be eating now. <laughs> All 
Are people still trying to make plans with you for this summer as if you aren't booked and busy already? Come on, we're busy. We're going to, we're doing all kinds of things. We have pool days and pride parades and bachelor parties and beach vacations. They're all waiting for us. But Liz and Julie, we are thankful that Me Undies wants to help make this summer the most comfortable one you'll never forget. Because when you're living your best life, as you know, we are, the yeah. last thing you, the last thing you want to worry about is butt sweat. Really? Right. <laughs> You're making it sound like now that we're leaving the house again, we have to remember to put on underwear. Is that your point? <laughs> put on your meandies, people. A little post-it note. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, Liz? All I'm saying is when you're comfy and feeling good, you're most present to enjoy all your summer plans, right? It's oh. like science or something. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> because, you know, we know that MeUndies has the lightest, most breathable fabrics to keep you cool and comfortable wherever you go. There's mm-hmm. undies, there's bralettes, there's socks, there's loungewear, and now there is swimwear. And Liz and Julie, can I tell you that I just ordered my first MeUndies swimsuit? Oh, Ooh. I can't wait to hear about that. Me Ooh. either. I can't wait to see it. It's a really classic one piece in black with a deep V. I think it's going to look great on me, frankly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so- <laughs> So I just went with it. I don't have a black swimsuit. You know, I don't know what happened. I have all kinds of bright colors. Liz, you know, they have a sea turtle print there for you to get a swimsuit. Well, I know that they have the sea turtle undies. So of course. All right. I'm on it. Get it. They're so cute. And and, and, sea turtle bathing suit. Sign me up. Yeah. I'll sign myself up. You could wear it to every summer party list. (laughs) (laughs) Here comes that sea turtle bathing suit again. Maybe not every party. (laughs) <laughs> it would be funny to have a signature look. All right. All we're saying is that MeUndies has a great offer for Satellite Sisters listeners. For any first-time purchasers, you're going to get 15% off. For a limited time, if you sign up for the free-to-join MeUndies membership, you get 25% off your first membership item. So to get 15% off your first order, 25% off your membership item, and 100% satisfaction guarantee, do this. Go to MeUndies.com slash sisters. That's MeUndies.com slash sisters. Thanks, MeUndies. Leon and Julie here, and we're excited because this is the part of the show where we get to talk about our favorite skincare products, Osea. It can be really hard to find skincare products with clean, effective ingredients that actually work. And that's why we love talking about Osea because, Julie, we love these products, don't we? Honestly, Leanne, I am so happy it's time to talk about Osea. <laughs> I mean, and this is the season of skin. You're going to have a lot of skin a lot of skin in the summer. And I just love that body oil. I mean, mm. it's amazing. And I love the light marine scent that it has. Well, their special secret ingredient is seaweed. I guess oh. it's not. I guess it's not secret it's, if I can talk about it. You've told everyone now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but these are clean, vegan, cruelty-free products. Mm-hmm. And the star ingredient is seaweed. That's why they have that delicious marine smell that we mm. love. Don't, yes. don't we? I do. <laughs> I do. And so does my dog because he tries to lick it off my legs. My okay. dog likes it too. Uh, what What have you recently ordered? Didn't she just refresh? I did. I did refresh, Leanne. I bought both um, the five ounce and the one ounce size of the body oil because I thought that would be very good for travel. And I also thought it would make a very nice little gift to give to some friends. Oh, How yeah. No, I've been giving. I want to the spread the word about it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, I've been giving out the like the sample size gift packs as birthday gifts, huge, huge faves with my friends. So here's the deal. If you want to go check out Osea Malibu, please do, because we really do enjoy these skincare products. I like the anti-aging balm, the body balm. Have you tried? <laughs> have you tried that? Why did you say balm again? Balm. Like, oh, I haven't. Oh. Mm, it's a cross between the lotion and the oil. It's a balm, Julie. Okay. And I sometimes I double down. I oil, then I balm my okay. skin. Okay. It's, it's... Leanne. Good. I bet, I bet you're looking uh, dewy and moist. Yeah, it's exactly right. Mm-hmm. It's exactly right. So here's what you do. If you want to find your new skincare and body care favorites, go to oseamalibu.com and get a special discount for our satellite sisters and misters. Get 10% off your first order site-wide with promo code SAT sisters at oseamalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order delightful and orders over $50 get free shipping. So you're going to want it all go to Osea Malibu.com and Osea is O S E A Malibu Osea Malibu.com and use code sat sisters.
Lee and Julie and Liz here. All right, Liz and Julie, we've been off for the last couple of weeks and no doubt, I feel like there's been a record number of sadness Mm -hmm. incidents in Mm -hmm. the last couple of weeks. Obviously the shootings in Texas, the shooting in Buffalo, we spoke about, there've been more shootings everywhere. It's just been an overwhelming amount of bad news and frustration and heartbreak and this heartbreak week, for sure. Heartbreak, heartbreak yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, yeah. that's just a, I, that doesn't even, it's hard to even characterize how heartbreaking all this is. And so it seems so unnecessary, but this week it was just driven home to me because I went to a memorial service Saturday for a friend of ours that died young and unexpectedly. And it was not uh, from gun violence. And so it's not the equivalent of all those funerals we've been watching on TV, but it did have some equivalency because it was just a reminder to me that every death is a real person with a real family and real friends, and those people love them and will miss them. In this particular case, you know, this young father, he was in his early 50s. He leaves behind a 12 year old son and a 15 year old son and a wife. There were 350 people at the memorial service. He was someone that had a wide circle of friends. He had stayed in touch with his high school friends and his college friends and his work friends and his neighborhood friends. He was clearly someone that was a connector and a terrific father and husband. He was a great brother and son. It it was the saddest thing I have been to in a long time, but I think it was also because of all the general sadness in the country. Like we see these headlines every day. Now, every day, it feels like there's three dead in Philadelphia, two dead here. And you forget that those are real people with Mm -hmm. ripple effects of what their loss means. I just... It's and how much grief they're co- trying to cope with, Leanne. Yes. So much grief. And and that grief affects so many more people. I mean, we right. talked about it a little bit after Buffalo, just like almost everybody knows somebody now. And right. it's only been gotten worse since then. Yeah. So yeah. I just, I mean, my heart goes out to all those people, but loss is hard and yeah. it's, it's meaningful and it's permanent. And I know that sounds stupid, but it just was really driven home to me this weekend. Like, yeah, when people go unexpectedly, that is just terrible. You know, it is, it leaves a giant hole and it's heartbreaking for so many people. And, you know, it's so interesting that you say, Liam, that this one person and one person's story just really got to you because that's exactly the point in this story that I mentioned earlier about the psychic numbing of mass tragedies. They find when they study it, that it's if you focus on one person at a time, that then then you're feeling the emotions and you're dealing with your own grief and anger. But if you don't do that, if you don't focus on the individual life stories and the individual losses, then you kind of go numb. That's what the psychic numbing is. Mm -hmm. And so this is a study by a guy named Paul Slovic at the University of Oregon. And it was interesting. He was inspired to like understand what is happening with people when they just go numb on things after the genocide in Rwanda, because he just sort of felt like that went right over people's heads and they didn't really focus in on what happened there. And when he dug in and really looked at it and studied it, he found that we care less about calamity when more people are harmed Mm -hmm. and that the, um, and you would think it would be the opposite, right? Right. right. But in fact, if the numbers get bigger and bigger, we get more and more desensitized Mm -hmm. to, to what is happening. And it, and reading about it, it reminded me a little bit about 9-11, where I remember the scale of that death was so huge. It was hard to wrap your mind around. But then when the New York Times started running those individual portraits, portraits right. of yes of grief yes you could engage with one story at a time and that was actually helpful like right. i got into the habit of reading every single one of those you know every day because engaging with a single victim it's such a weird thing because you need to feel the feelings right and yet i know i'm sure i'm not the only one where especially like after evaldi where i thought like oh my god 
I don't know if I can engage with this. Right. Like, I don't know on top of pandemic and climate change and, you know, baby formula crisis and, you know, uh, social justice issues. Like, can I really like emotionally open myself to this scale of heartbreak again? And it's, it's super challenging, but I think you need to find a way to engage with the information without just watching it over and over again on the news, you know? I mean, it's not right to shut it out. It's, you know, I mean. No, but it's tempting, don't you think, Julie? Oh, Some absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's almost too much to bear. And and that's that's it. Yeah. Right. I like you ask yourself, do I have the emotional bandwidth to read these individual stories of those children in Uvalde? Mm-hmm. And you, you and, have to. You, you to have them. to. Yeah. You, you owe to. it to them. Yeah. You know, and yet it's really hard, yeah. um, you know, because you could just blow it off. Any of the difficult issues of our time, the article says you could just you could just blow it off. But engaging with it is what makes you human right. and finding a way to do that. And then, of course, they you know, the story goes on to detail, like when you're feeling that helplessness what can you do about it? You can volunteer in support of the cause. You can sign up to do things that would be helpful. You could just like reach out to the family and try to be helpful to them. So you need to like engage with it. And then you need to find some way of feeling helpful or not quite as helpless. I think we all feel helpless in a lot of areas right now. And, uh, and it's very challenging. So that's why just the the Liz, mo- I'm glad we're talking about this because it's it has been so painful and so heartbreaking. You don't you almost don't want to raise it with your friends. You know, yes. you don't you don't you want to open that, you know, that uh, really deep wound of you know what it feels like, um, you know, um, yeah. as, as a parent, you know, to think about all those parents losing those children. You know, it's mm-hmm. terrible. It's terrible. Mm-hmm. But but yet it is it just as you said, it's important to you know, to find the time uh, to to think about it individually and to, th- you know, and to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Because what you don't want either as an individual or as a society is to end up just being completely desensitized. Right. And exactly. sometimes I feel like we're on the verge of that. Yeah. You know, that people are just letting it roll over them because they don't know how to deal with it. Yeah. So it's just a, it's a super challenging time. And I think in all of our lives. Well, that's why those protest signs that say don't look away, that's yeah. sort of exactly right on target. Yeah. Don't look away. Yeah. yeah. Just don't look away. You have to, you have to stare it straight in the face. But just a just a reminder that those people, those headlines, those are individual people and their lives had meaning. Mm-hmm. They had meaning. Mm-hmm. All right, Julie, you're get, you're you. we're gonna make a big swing here. We but, are gonna uh, make a hard, make a big a big tour, turn to uh talk about some you know, some lighter topics, but hopefully those will, um, you know, be of interest and of fun to you. And, you know, every Tuesday, uh, I, I try to bring up some Tuesday trends and I have some for you here today. And, uh, and when it comes they... to trends, you know, the more trivial, the better, Julie, I say, bring it okay. on, bring it okay. on. What are the, what well, are I hope, I hope it cheers you up. That's what yeah. I think. Okay. Here's the first one. Okay. Move over caftans. That's what I say. Twenty. <laughs> It's all about nap dresses, N-A-P dresses, nap dresses. Have you heard of these, Liz no. and Liam? No. Okay. No. I have. I, I have heard of these. I don't know how they differ from caftans. Do tell. Oh, oh well, quite a bit differently. Okay. Quite a bit differently. <laughs> There's no comparison. These were launched in 2019, uh, and this has become one of the biggest word of mouth clothing trends out there. I don't know what that I don't I don't know if there's any factual basis to that with the statement I just made, but that could be true. Okay, but what they are are loose fitting, easy breezy dresses. But here's a key. They have a lot of smocking across the um, the the bodice. You've seen seen these. Yes. 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 Smock dress, nap dresses. And you're supposed to be able to lounge around nap. Um, and then just get up and look so easy breezy that you could go go out and do grocery shopping, uh, gardening, whatever in your nap dress. Okay. Okay. I I've just 
full of admiration for whoever made up that name. That is like marketing genius. <laughs> okay. Okay. But I don't really think to nap in something with all that smocking across agree, the front of your chest. That's not comfortable. Just think, think about that for a second. I, I agree, okay. Julie. I'm with okay. you. That, well, as someone with the chest, I would like to just speak up and say, that looks itchy. Yeah, that looks uncomfortable. That looks okay. All right. <laughs> I, but if you're but also not that flattering on gro- grown women, frankly. <laughs> okay. 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 Well, it's a word of mouth uh, clothing item. So, uh, get, so nap dresses, let me know if you're wearing them. Uh, and if you feel like this is the new caftan. Okay. Second trend, Liz. Okay. I need your expertise on this. You okay. know a lot about track and field. <laughs> Okay. Running backwards. Okay. This is not new, but it's supposed to be exciting and fun. And, and by running backwards, you can really add to your fitness and exercise routine. It's supposed to strengthen your calves and your quads and your shins. It's supposed to make you more balanced. I don't know how this is possible, Liz, because I think you would <laughs> fall over. But what's what's the story about running backwards? Are you seeing it on the tracks out in California? I have, I have two insights on this. Number okay. one, it is good for you. And I know that not from the track and field world, but because my physical therapist has me do this to get on a treadmill, <gasps> start the treadmill very, very slowly. That's the key. Very, very, very slowly and hang on for dear life and just walk backwards for a while. It's good. It is good for your calves and quads, as you said, Julie. So that's one way. That's the way my PT has told me to try walking backwards. But what I've seen almost every morning in my neighborhood for like the last 10 years is there's this older couple that goes for a walk every morning when I am walking Hooper and they link arms so that with facing in opposite directions. So at any point, one of them is walking backwards and this, and I see them like walk two blocks and then they'll change around. So the other one is backwards and here they are still alive blue zone right here in my, <laughs> in my own. <laughs> okay. But this little walking thing that they're doing, they look pretty good for, you know, an advanced age. So those are my two completely anecdotal pieces of information about this. Well, retro running, as it's also known, is supposed to burn calories, challenge your brain, and apparently to clean your creaking legs. It's supposed to, I don't know what it's supposed to do. It seems like you can fall in a pothole to me. Yes. Yes. In a second. Yeah, wildly dangerous. Uh, yes, but it's out there. Uh, that's retro- why I think that's why I think the hanging on to a partner is the key to this. Yeah, and your partner is either your elderly husband or it's your <laughs> treadmill. I don't. I do not believe running backwards should be a solo activity for, well, people of a certain age. Let's just say that. Okay. You know. Okay. All right. I, I say this as a recent fall victim, okay. so I feel like I have. Yes. You know. Okay. Well, I didn't know you're going backwards, Liz. That's very impressive. Keep up the good work. Okay. Okay. Leon, this is for you. Trend number three, coffee is having a moment. Okay. New York times research this week um, said that found that those who drank a moderate amount of coffee, one to three cups, even with a little sugar in it, were up to 30% 30% less likely to die. Okay. Wow. During this study period. Really? This big, yes. This is a big study. They were studying people on, you know, various health things. And they realized that the coffee drinkers, the moderate coffee drinkers um, were less likely to die. So drink up sister. Okay. How about that? We always say we tackle the world one cup of coffee at a time. Now you can have up to three cups, Leanne, okay? That's good. That's too many cups for me. But two cups of coffee is what I have every day. You know what? I remember once being at a juice bar in LA where I get a lot of great health advice. (laughs) And uh, unsolicited, no doubt. Yes. It was at my gym, okay? It was at when I had a fancy gym, which I no longer have. Uh, I went and I they had like 8,000 smoothie recipes. And I'm like, you know, I'm just going to have a cup of coffee. And, you know, the girl, uh, the batatooed and benose ringed girl behind the bar said, you know what, man, coffee is all natural and it's better for you than any of this stuff, stuff in these smoothies. <laughs> okay. And I was like, 
sister, you're right about that. Like I never thought <laughs> Thank about Thank you, it. Dr. Juice Bar. Thank you. <laughs> so, okay, well, that I is confirmed. I, okay, <laughs> coffee. So drink up. Coffee is having a moment. You know, and Julie, coffee. I read that news story and I thought 30%, that is a huge number. So yeah. that, that impressed me. Yeah. Okay. I didn't read any of the details. Just read the headline. As soon as they said I was 30% less likely to draw die if I was drinking coffee, I'm all in. There we there you go. No, I did read that. Okay. And finally, Liz, the, a lot of companies are doing this. Unilever is one. They Unilever is pushing their 400 brands to come up with a social and environmental purpose in addition to just being a brand. So right now they're working on what should be the social or emotional uh, environmental purpose of Hellman's mayonnaise. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now to me, the highest and best use of Hellman's may- mayonnaise, of course, is a BLT. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, what do you think about this trend, Liz, that you can't just be mayonnaise or they, they give the example of walls, ice cream, their, you know, their um, their purpose in life is to raise national ha- happiness, which is uh-huh. good. I yeah. like that. Sure. But do you think products need to have a social or environmental purpose uh, to uh, to exist? Hey, well, Julie, just talk to Gen Z. The answer is yes. The, uh, the, the, the youngest consumers, the people that are just, as they would say in the marketing business, just sort of setting their brand preferences. They want to know this about your company. They want to know this about your product. They think it's important that everyone's in it for for the greater good. So I don't poo poo this. I think this is actually kind of it's kind of an interesting development. And you say that it's Unilever. Remember the big breakthrough at Unilever was when Dove yes. went all in on social purpose. Yes, you yes. know, and that's been hugely successful for them. It's been great for us to see, I think, as women in the world, the things that Dove communicates about really are uplifting, whether it's young women or, you know, women more our age. So I think the Dove success story is just one inside that company that makes people feel like, okay, you know, we need to make sure we're doing the right thing across the board. Now with me, if it's Hellman's Mayonnaise, of course, Nobody needs to convince me to buy Hellman's mayonnaise. That's the only the only brand there is. So, uh, yeah. but if if you want to tell me that the Hellman's the eggs are organic and the oil in it is organic, well, that's all to the good too. So I don't overthink it. I don't think it's how to use mayonnaise for social good. Well, that's what they said. The mission is to curb food waste. Oh, right. So I was thinking what it, yeah. what it would okay. do. If every product actually, if every company that produced every product actually took a hard look at like, what is the mission of this product? Yeah. I bet about 95% of the products that are currently manufactured would no longer be manufactured, <laughs> right? There are lots, there's just a lot of stupid stuff out there. Yeah. And we're, I know, but it, BLTs, like that's right. a good mission. Okay. Well, <laughs> yes. No, I agree. I'm not, no, more helmets, okay. more helmets, less plastic toys. Right. I mean, that's. Okay. Like, okay. you know, everything at the dollar store. I mean, what, what is it there for? What is its purpose, Julie? I don't okay. know. Okay. All right. Well, apparently this is a trend in pro- products that uh, we're going to have to think some more about. But uh, It's not just the company. So we should be thoughtful about what we are buying. So, right. well, exactly. yes. Yes. Okay. I think it's, I think it's good to think about some of these things. I agree. But, but I All don't, right. I don't think that mayonnaise your way to world peace is the goal here, you know? <laughs> Okay, can we? <laughs> and I would just say this. I mean, this is a spontaneous discussion, but we actually invested in Unilever and our Women's Investment Club because uh-huh. they are a company that really walks the walk and talks the talk. Like yes. they do a lot of thinking on every level. They're at the the, the forefront of a lot of of a lot of sort of important it, it, initiatives on on all fronts. So it doesn't surprise me that it's coming out of Unilever. That being said, their stock hasn't done very well in the last. <laughs> 20 years because they had some supply chain issues, but I appreciate that they're still thinking deeply about the mayonnaise. That's good. Okay. Carry on. Carry on. Well, it's summertime satellite sisters, misters, and smisters, and that means grilling. That's right. This summer, add some power players to your grilling lineup with Butcher Box. You know we love our Butcher Box subscriptions. They deliver high quality meat and seafood right to your doorstep. You can choose from a carefully curated selection of 100% grass fed beef 
free range organic chicken, wild caught seafood, and more. And right now, new subscribers can receive a free grilling bundle in their first order. So Liz, what's on your grill this summer? What's happening there? Well, the first thing I did, which made me feel like a genius, Leon, is that I had my next butcher box box sent to bend oregon where i will be for some of the summer oh. so i'm going to have like a freezer full of all the deliciousness you just named the beef the chicken the seafood i'm going to be grilling my full head off in <laughs> you know in my backyard there so i'm very excited about that and i like threw in some extra ground beef and things because summer's about burgers so that's my plan Oh, Liz, that's great. You know, it's just super convenient because it's packed fresh and it's shipped frozen. And then you can just defrost it anytime you want. And dinner is on the grill. It's super duper easy. Very convenient. If you want to get in on this, here's what you do. Get summer sizzling started with this special butcher box deal for our listeners. Free bacon for the life of your membership plus $10 off. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash sisters and you'd code and use code sisters to get one pack of free bacon in every box for the life of your membership, plus 10% off your first order. That's butcherbox.com slash sisters and use code sisters to claim this deal. Butcherbox.com slash sisters use code sisters. Thanks, Butcherbox. Hey, Liz and Julie, I have exciting news. A Spontaneous Satellite Sisters Meetup is happening uh, next week in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Oh, so, right. So that means we're not invited? We're, we're no. going? Are we going, Liz? <laughs> we, no, we weren't I mean, invited. Everyone's invited. No, I'm inviting you now. I don't think you'll be in Santa Fe next week, but I will be in Santa Fe. Oh. I'm doing some research for my next book. And we I finally have a week where I can schedule some, some time to do that. So I booked an Airbnb. My husband and I are driving over from California. And when I mentioned it on the show, several of uh, native Santa Feans uh, said, hey, we'd love to do a book signing. And I said, hey, I don't have time to arrange a book signing, but we could just have a drink maybe. So, so hats off to Cheryl and Tina, because they have organized a little Satellite Sisters happy hour. It's going to be on Tuesday, June 14th at 5 p.m. on the rooftop bar of the famous La Fonda Hotel. So I'm very excited oh, because this nice. is an excellent choice because it was on my list to do this anyway. Love rooftop bars and it's the oldest in Santa Fe and that's it. It's just a show up if you're in Santa Fe next Tuesday 5 p.m. I'll put details on the Facebook page. I'll also put details in uh, in pep talk this week. But, um, you know, if you're going to bring like 100 people, we'll probably need to know. But if it's just you, just show up and somehow we'll, they'll be identifying. We'll have some sort of identifying signage and you can find us. But thanks to Cheryl and Tina. I'm looking forward to my week in Santa Fe. I have a lot of fun things planned, a, a cooking class, a farmer's market, a uh, a soak in a hot tub. I'll be doing a lot of writing, walking around. I'm trying to get a feel for the place while I'm there so I can put it all in the next book, but I'm really excited about that. So that sounds so uh, fun. And yeah. And 5 PM is a good time. Cause you need to be at dinner by seven 13. That's right. Seven <laughs> thirteen. <laughs> it's true. Oh, it's true. That's good. That gives you just enough time. <laughs> right. All right. Uh, right. Well, and so Julie, that means you and I are left in charge next week with no Leon. We're I know, like, I know that's she's, she's going to read us the riot act before she leaves <laughs> about how things really happen at satellite <laughs> sisters. No doubt. But we're going to have, we we're planning a great show, Liz, right? We're going to focus on a lot of work issues, which yeah. uh, both yeah. of us like to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. We decided it would be interesting to talk about the whole, where we are on the whole work from home thing mm -hmm. and how you're coping with that. Has your, has your company gone back? We'd like to hear about that. Or did the company say we want everyone back? And everyone said, no, no way. We're not coming back. Yeah. There seems to be a lot of news about that. Like, how do you feel about being back in a workplace? Or maybe it's your kids. Maybe it's not you. Maybe it's, you've got, you know, Gen Z kids who are like finally out of the house back in a real office. So we're going to have that discussion. We will post something in the Satellite Sisters Facebook group. Um, just like, what are you thinking about where you work, how you work? I know we have lots of listeners who are like 
thrilled to be working remotely yeah. and are purposely trying to find new jobs that allow them to work remotely. Or how you would even pitch this to your boss. If you want to work remotely, how does a work team work, you know, put together a proposal that your boss might consider uh, for work work from home, but still get all the work covered? I mean, there's a big experiment going on in Great Britain now where they're trying the four day work week. You know, we'll see. You know, we're going to talk about that, too. So, yeah. Yeah, We'd love to hear what's happening with you, what you're interested in, what you think is the right balance of, you know, of working from home, being in an office, you know, that that will be fun. Yeah. And if you're a workplace leader, like, how do you even manage this conversation with your employees? Mm-hmm. You know, it's one thing to doing what your boss tells you to do. But if you're trying to make people do something they don't want to do, I'm very curious about how you pitch that to, you know to your employees. So we'll put a question about this in the Satellite Sisters Facebook group. If you're not on Facebook or a member of the group, you can just email us. And our email is hello at satellitesisters.com. So if you have thoughts on this subject, really, or anything, but particularly for for next week for this subject, just email us hello at satellitesisters.com. That's going to be a fun show. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. You should, you should listen to it, Liam. When you're <laughs> I will. I will listen. Because well, Leanne, you've been like a hundred percent work from home for most of your career. Yes. Right? That's the the nature of being a novelist. <laughs> yes. But you know, Julie and I had to do hard time in offices. Yeah. Yes. I've tried every co- combination ever. Yeah. So but I do see a lot of these Gen Z kids, you know, this is my son's age group. If they've never been to an office, they all hate their jobs. You know, because they've never gotten a chance to go to an office. They're really yeah, right. struggling one, two, three years into this career. Like work is terrible because they're still working like in their childhood bedroom. Yeah. And it's not that exciting. It's mm-hmm. it's very difficult to not have a work culture. It's really hard to do. So I, I do think that Gen Z angle is, is interesting, too, because this is not setting them up to love work. Right. right? And I you can't <laughs> blame them. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't think you can blame them. No, there are, I think work culture when you're in your 20s is super fun. It's fun. It's your that's social where, life. It's usually. where you meet your friends. Yeah. It's where, yeah, that's where the fun is, is yeah. like in your work environment usually. Yeah. So I think, I, good. I'm glad you guys are concentrating on this. Great. Okay. okay so yes, thank you. So I guess our idea is approved, Julie. So. Okay, good. We can move ahead. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks, producer sister. You're welcome. Hey, it's time for Entertaining Sisters. I saw two fantastic movies this weekend that I want to recommend to everyone. The first is now the Queen's Jubilee, which went on uh, this weekend was amazing, but probably one of the most, the loveliest, one of the loveliest points of it was the short YouTube video that the Queen did with Paddington Bear. Have you seen this? Have you seen this sisters? I I only watched it this morning, Julie, because you said you were going to talk about it. Yes. Somehow that somehow I I missed the whole Jubilee this weekend. I I, I don't know what I was doing, but I did so, too. I, I haven't seen it. I'll do yeah. tell. And it is a hundred percent charming. Um I yeah. I it agree. is a hundred percent charming. You could watch it a hundred times <laughs> and and you'll you'll just delight. I don't want to if you haven't seen it, um, we're gonna post it at Satellite Sisters. Uh, it's been all over, but if you have I don't want to tell you the details, but I really don't know how they got Queen Elizabeth to agree to do this. She's a great sport, and apparently she has a great sense of humor. That's all I'll say. Okay. Okay. Well, she did that jumping out of the plane thing. Yes, this is, and I don't, I didn't know how she was going to top that, Liz, but I I think she managed to top top this. uh, This did not require stunts. She didn't, but it required, I mean, the timing. The little details involved were are just delightful. So be sure to check that out uh, online, uh, The Queen and Paddington Bear. And then the second that we talked about right at the beginning of the show is Top Gun Maverick. OK, now I have to say I was somewhat reluctant, like I like I enjoyed the first Top Gun, but it wasn't like I was going to rush to the movie theaters to see this. But then pretty much everyone I knew, every age group all kinds of people from different sectors were like have you seen top con yet oh it's great it's great it's great so that's my review sisters it's great you <laughs> should go see it okay it's a good story i don't know how tom cruise did a great job good story it's got a great cast they make they have wonderful references to the first top gun 
it's, it's how they have integrated the two stories that way. And but mainly what I wanted to say is that in the movie theater, all age groups were there. Mm -hmm. I saw families. I saw teenagers. I saw, uh, you know, older people there. You know, there was all kinds of people. This movie is appropriate, I would say, for kids over the age of eight. OK, it is not super violent. There's not bad language and it's not even as mushy in terms of the romance part uh, as the first Tom, uh, Top Gun. So uh, so kids will enjoy this. It's like it's, uh, parts of it are like a video game. So they certainly will be able to relate to it. They used, you know, extra special cameras to in the cockpit cockpits to to capture the um, the actors flying these planes. They use real F-18s in the um, in the movie. So just a great action movie, period. Go see it. OK, you know, the one word that put me off is everyone kept saying, oh, it's so nostalgic. And I'm just not down with nostalgia, frankly, and I'm not nostalgic <laughs> for the original Top Gun. But OK, that's a good review, Julie. It's no, just it like is. No, they've done a good job integrating the two without overplaying that, Liz. I okay. don't. Uh, OK, so whoever told you it was not nostalgic, it's probably wrong. OK, I think that was the Satellite Sisters Facebook group was really. Oh. <laughs> well, well, they're right. And anyway, and I'm you, wrong. Heard, you heard it here yes. first. Top Gun Maverick is a pretty good movie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. All right. So I have a couple of things I wanted to discuss. The first is a book. Now, this is a book called When We Fell Apart. It's a novel by a first time author named Soon Wiley. And it is, I really, really am enjoying it. I'm about two thirds of the way through, but there's a little bit of a backstory here. This is when, Leon, when you're book came out like a couple of months ago I gave a signed copy to my neighbor Paula mm -hmm. and those of you who are fans of cooking with Liz will know Paula because she has been in uh you know Liz's tasting window and I said you know here's Leanne's new novel she was like oh thank you very much and uh but my nephew has a new novel too so let me get you a copy of that so a week later Paula came over and she gave me a copy of When We Fell Apart by by Soon, Soon Wiley and then I thought, oh, you know, like the, the post we had in the Facebook group, Leanne, where a member of the group said, everyone kept saying Leanne's book was so good. And I thought you were all just being nice, but I read it and it really is good. <laughs> That's the story here too. I was like, okay, Paula's nephew, first time, first time novelist, you got to support that. And so I started to read it and I'm like, wow, this is really a good book. So it's a mystery. It takes place, it's set in Seoul. And the main character is a um, sort of bicultural, biracial Korean American. And he goes to work in Korea because he wants to kind of get in touch with his Korean roots. Then there's a romance with the Korean girl. She ends up dying. The police say it's suicide and he doesn't believe it. So the rest of the story is him figuring out what really happened to her. And but it's really good because it also tells you a lot of things that I've always been interested in about Korea. You, know, you, you always read about how Korean young people, how hard they work to get into the universities and what that is like. And so they're at that stage in their lives. So so it's just culturally really interesting. Um, and also Seoul is a like a big exciting city that I've been to once or twice, but never really spent any time there. And I don't think I've ever read anything set in Seoul before. You see it occasionally in movies. And it's just fascinating to read about the Korean culture in, uh, in Seoul. So I, I totally recommend it. When We Fell Apart by, by Soon Wiley. And he, you know, he's Korean American. Her nephew, Soon Wiley, grew up um, here, grew up in Connecticut, I think it said, actually, or no, lives in Connecticut now. He's originally from Nyack, New York. So he's from our part of the country. Anyway, very good. I recommend that. Um, so then, I don't know if this was the right idea for me. Uh, I decided I had to, that I had to finish Ozark. Um, I hadn't, I got like halfway through the final season. And then, I don't know, there was like, I don't know, things came up. And last week I just decided, okay, do I really need to push through? I feel like I, I don't know how that story ended. And that was a 
crazy series, Ozark. So, so I'm back trying to get through Ozark. And the thing with that show, Julie, you watched it, right? Uh, well, Liz, you know, I've actually decided I don't think I can finish the last um, season. Really? It's just too dark. I, and maybe it's back to our original conversation about how, you know, upsetting the world is. I, I just can't do it. So, yeah. Uh, OK, yeah, I'm I'm having trouble. But I texted a friend of mine who's a huge Ozark fan. I'm like, OK, working my way through the final five episodes. And she texted back. Have you finished yet? you might need a shoulder. So I'm like, oh God, now I really feel like I need to know what goes on in Ozark. Anyway, I'm working on it. If people have thoughts, like I put a link in the show notes, but even as I was getting the link in the show notes, I didn't want to see any spoilers. Right, no spoilers. Don't want people, don't put it. No, uh, no, yeah. no. So don't, uh, don't yeah. tell Liz and don't yeah. tell me either. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So that's just, that's just Ozark. But the thing I'm really trying to finish, you know, I've been watching this season of Top Chef Houston with my neighbors across the courtyard. And uh, so what we've been doing is every other week getting together and watching two episodes and then having tasty treats as we watch the two episodes. <laughs> but but now, so it's a nice little thing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, now they've been away for like three weeks. Uh-huh. And I believe exactly, Leon. I like, I believe the finale already happened. And I've been desperately trying to avoid any Top Chef news anywhere. Again, today, even trying to put a link in the show notes. I couldn't look. It's like I was typing with my eyes closed. Like, how do I get a link to Top Chef without finding out what the, what the finale was? Okay. Anyway, so good news. Friday night. We're doing it. We're doing it. They're home <laughs> back. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to tell you anything then. I'm Don't tell me tell anything. anything. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We can discuss when you get back from uh, your, your Santa Fe adventure. Fantastic. Will do. All right, Liz waiting for top chef. It's worth it. Um, all right. I want to recommend a new album. I'm a big fan of Florence and the machine and they have a new album out called dance fever and just, uh, it, it will lift your spirits. The first oh, three, good. the first three songs in particular, just back to back to back, just to remind you how great it is to listen all the way through to a whole album, uh, which very few people do these days. Just, just pick it up, put it on your Spotify, listen to it, uh, on your next car ride. Fantastic. I love Florence, love the machine and love this album dance okay. Fever is the name of it yeah all right yeah and then in a couple of weeks uh, we are going to um the palomino festival here in pasadena i i guess it's a country music festival i don't know <laughs> it's it's named after seems like you better music. find out sounds like a cowboy festival okay <laughs> I, or cowgirl <laughs> i mean i saw jason isbell on the on the bill and i was like yes i want to walk a half mile down the street and see jason isbell right it's it's walking distance from my house but the actual headliner is casey musgraves oh and i know people love her i just haven't listened to a lot of casey uh musgraves i'm going to try in the next couple of weeks to just get on board i know she's fantastic uh so feel free in the satellite sisters facebook group to 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 send me your favorite casey songs uh, the must list or your top three or put together a playlist on spotify and send it to me uh i'm absolutely uh happy to do that just got to get on board with casey musgrave yeah so yeah. that's it oh well that well that'll be good if you're on a road trip to new mexico and back yeah oh yeah good idea liz do, right. do a lot of time yeah okay all right one last thing i want to mention like yeah i know most podcasts you listen to at the end of every show they tell you to could you please rate and review our show and <laughs> we we almost never do that because We just like when it comes from your heart, when you feel so moved to do it, of course, we want you to do it, but we leave that up to you. So when there's occasionally great review shows up, we share that with you to just inspire you a little bit without pestering you about it. So there was a really lovely one posted this week in Apple podcast by Baxter 79 Baxter, whoever you are. Thank you so much. So here's what Baxter wrote. Joining the Satellite Sisterhood sometime before the pandemic made Tuesday, Wednesday a weekly focus for me, and I'm sure others. While walking my dog, I'll walk an hour laughing and sometimes crying out loud behind sunglasses and learning so much. You are my friends who provide a connection to so many others through information, ideas, and just plain joy. Thank you. Oh, okay. So nice. Baxter. Nice. Thank, you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, Baxter. If, the, if that is what we are doing, 
our work here is done. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like that's a, a really good way to encapsulate what our goal is. So thank you to Baxter and to everyone else who has moved to post a review whenever you get around to it. A big thanks to Sergio Enriquez, our engineer. Thank you, Sergio. And to Emily Loudermilk, our graphic designer. To see all of Emily's great designs, you can follow us on Instagram at Sat Sisters or subscribe to Pep Talk. I did take last week off the newsletter, but I will be sending out a Pep Talk this week. So if you go to SatelliteSisters.com, which is our fully outfitted website. (laughs) We also always forget to mention. Fully operational, fully outfitted website, uh, a newsletter sign up will pop up right as you head over there. In the first three seconds, it pops up. Just fill in your email, um, your email address. And that's it. And you'll get uh, a little pep talk in your inbox most Fridays of the year. Most Fridays (laughs) of the year. That's not every Friday, but most. (laughs) Uh, A weekly newsletter is quite a commitment. Uh, All right. (laughs) It's every week, you guys. Doesn't stop. Um, All right. Uh, It's time for our to-dos. All right. I'm just going to start because... Liz and I are doing a speech tomorrow in downtown Los Angeles. Uh, We committed to this speech three, four years ago, Liz. Yes, it feels like forever ago. It it has been moved and moved and moved and moved. It is tomorrow, midday, downtown Los Angeles. You know what is also tomorrow, midday, downtown Los Angeles? The president of the United United States (laughs) coming to downtown Los Angeles for the summit of the Americas. So, I, Liz, we're going to have to leave now. I think we should leave now. It's a two day trip for this luncheon. I think, I mean, we're the keynote speakers. We can't be late. Like, we, like that's it. Like where they're going to play our walk on music, we got to walk on. So, uh, so when they freeze yeah. all of Los Angeles uh, for the oh. president, it's, I feel like we're going to be sitting on that freeway. So yeah. Yeah. I'm leaving, I'm leaving now. So uh, <laughs> okay. Liz, Liz, what's your to-do list? Okay, my to-do list is actually the same thing, is getting to this speech. And my fear is not just the traffic. My fear is that this thing has been moved so many times that I'm just going to forget to go. You know? <laughs> I do. So I do. Leon, feel free to text me in the morning. Remember, we're doing this speech today because you can't imagine how many, and we've had so many meetings about it. It's not so just, many. You know, just a lot of discussions with committee members about this thing. So anyway, I'm just, I'm very fearful that this one-off thing that has been delayed a hundred times, I'm just going to, I'm just going to space on it. <laughs> That would be the word. Oh, shoot. I forgot to go and keynote. Yeah, yeah. It'll be like mid-afternoon. I'm like, wait a minute. Wasn't there something I was supposed to do today? (laughs) The good thing is I know Leanne is fine without me. So uh, it's not not a tragedy. (laughs) And what about you? Okay. You know what? I have to help my husband. You know, he's a very smart guy and somehow he went on the internet. He just wanted to buy one product and ended up joining a club. Okay. So (laughs) he wanted to buy some deodorant and now he's in a deodorant club. Okay. (laughs) Okay. This isn't like a body. This isn't like a body care for men. No, this is just a deodorant club. Like who joins a deodorant club? Like what? What do you talk about in a deodorant club? <laughs> I don't know. But now we're getting like all different flavors of deodorant. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's funny. That, <laughs> whew, well, you guys will be busy. Uh, all right, Liz, I will see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good luck, lunch, sisters. Lunch lunch okay. Time. Leaving now. <laughs> all right, sisters, have a great week. And, you too, Leon. And don't forget, call your satellite sister. <laughs>